Hi and welcome here on pierrosini.com, the wine show. And as I promised that I will be in Tuscany, I actually realized it and I'm today really proud because I have a really special guest in my show. Next to me is Giuseppe Dottore, Giuseppe Mazzucolini. Giuseppe. Giuseppe. It's enough, Giuseppe. Okay, Giuseppe. <laughs> um, maybe you can yeah, introduce yourself a little bit for the audience, for the wine lovers. I'm happy to say that uh, my experience uh, in the context of uh, uh, facing a state was in relation of uh, the personal approach I found since the beginning uh, of my activity here. And uh, because the generous offer of my father-in-law, uh, Domenico Poggiali, uh, that wanted uh, to start and work and give the opportunity for me to, uh, to, co to consider my experience. Actually, you were a teacher, in right? Exactly, in relation of my previous activity. And it was, uh, I was a teacher at the high school with the perspective to continue at the university. It's funny because... But I have a humanistic formation. Uh, and so for me, for many reasons, was a great opportunity because I've seen something in continuity of my uh, idea of a school. Sorry when I interrupt you because I want to say it's kind of funny because in the past episode I interviewed Peter Gagel who is the chief winemaker of Penfolds and uh, he was also before he started uh, you know um, involving with the winemaking he was a teacher as well. Yes. So I think it's a, it's a good proposal to, to, to be a teacher before starting to doing wines. I think that uh, the best way to be teacher is one you can uh, accept and consider uh, every second of your life as a great opportunity to learn. Yeah. Only if you can learn every moment of your time of every day, you can perhaps share your knowledge <laughs> if you have. Yeah. But something that is important uh, for the other people that can live with you. And uh, I, I got the chance many times to think of uh, the opportunity to go back and teach again. Okay. And uh, I'm sure it will be totally different from uh, the idea I was, I was available for myself in relation to this activity. I only if you cross the life and also the economical activity, you can say to somebody also to the to new generation, the new generations, something that uh, is part in, part of uh, a common experience. Okay. Uh, and uh, what is common in this case is very very simple. Yeah, but when Wine is culture, yeah, agriculture absolutely. is part of something that is that must be considered in every schools, in every university. I no totally more agree. This is distances, no more uh, separated okay. lives, but together now is possible. I'm sure of that. And when it comes to, um, to about teaching, because you are kind of in, in a, still in the process, because when you talk about San Giovese, because you're also famous uh, or you're really mad about this variety, Sangiovese, which called you, you call it Sangiovetto here, and because it's, um, yeah, you're doing lots of researches to find the best clones for, for each terroir. You have some, uh, because it's not that we have many microclimates here uh, around Casanova de Beradenga, uh, also um, Vigna Rancha. So you are looking really about to find the right clones. Maybe you can say something about what is so amazing about San Giovetto. San Giovetto is the local name uh, to say San Giovese. And it is the grape that inherited from the past. It's the grape that gives the identity to this land, to the story of the wine of Tuscany and not only, because it's the first uh, grape we have in Italy and uh, when we started to work directly in the vineyards together our 
enologist, my friend Franco Bernabei, uh, we realized that Sangiovese was the grape to consider for our future. Uh, was the, the great opportunity to understand uh, really the identity, the character of this land. Uh, because it was possible to produce good wines. And I remember the 60s, uh, last century, I remember very well the 70s and the 80s. And when I started full time, it was 1982, because before I was a teacher, uh, it was normal to see the people drinking this wine in the Osteria, in Trattoria, in the in private houses. It was the wine of the life, the wine of the communications, the life, the wine in every family. So it was a pleasure to see the people uh, in simple uh, osterie, trattorie, play cards yeah. and drinking Sangiovese. A Sangiovese, of course, yeah. So, so it was the grape that was considered the, the real identity of a land part of the landscape, part of something that is the culture that you breath in the yeah. air. And uh, so it was absolutely very important to respect this grape and uh, to give the right value because it was always in relation of uh, uh, Chianti, of an idea of Chianti, considered as a Chianti wine, good wine for every day when not was not all, always possible to guarantee a good vin vinification. Okay. And so... Because it's hard to ripe, right? Yes. It's a lot of time, lots of sun. In the past, it was normal to use also white grapes and yeah. canaiolo. I respect canaiolo very much. It's one of the best grapes also we have in our tradition. We have some vineyards with canaiolo. And uh, Trebbiano Malvasia also, but it was a concept of Chianti, a little bit old-fashioned, that I respect, and if I find again a wine like that, I am very happy yeah. to drink it, yeah. because it reminds me the freshness, the pleasure to drink yeah. every day. But the concept of wine today is different, and uh, we need to understand exactly the, the potentiality of a grape. Okay. We need to understand how the wine can change in the bottle, and it was not possible to guarantee a long future of a Sangiovese grape when there was a significant percentage of okay. white grapes. Yeah. So for that reason, with uh, Franco, uh, we decided to uh, follow the example of our old farmers, still young when we met them uh, at the beginning, and uh, but the farmers that were accustomed to be in relation with this grape and not only with the grape of course but with the vineyards and especially with the land the earth yeah so it was very important to understand to uh, to hear about them from them from them and uh, step by step to consider each vineyard in relation of its uh, history, but it also in relation of its potentiality. And so it was necessary to identify the best clones. Clones is a st strong word, I don't like to use it. Yeah, it's it. more something like because, Star Wars. Yes, <laughs> uh, I think it's important to, to say phenotype, phenotypes. Yeah. It's, it's important to say that it was necessary to, with the massal selection, to identify the best material to preserve from the old vineyards and for the new plantations. Now we have a lot. How many do you cl clones? If, um, or, or yes. To say in other words, how many uh, different Sangiovese uh, stylistic of Sangiovese do you have now in production? We introduced Could you say something, something also that was selected outside uh, from different nurseries. And, uh, but we can say that we work with uh, almost uh, 30 different okay. varieties of Sangiovese. Yeah. 
It's, it was a um, yeah, uh, Barone so. Francesco Ricasoli. He's oh. also really um, like addicted in San Giovese. He, he was I was talking to him. It was just all, we were talking about you, and he said, "Yeah, that I have to come here because for yeah, him, I'm, San Giovese is also really great uh, variety." I was recently in, to Broglio, and uh, well, I was received uh, from a, a very special gentleman and a uh, good, very good friend and uh, we spent some time and together and it was an honor for me to visit his vineyards and the vineyards of Broglio and uh, I realized that it was the same reality it was not uh, for me any kind of difference okay. Because was uh, there was a continuity, a work that we are doing with different uh, approach, but with always the same main objective, that is the respect of the work and the respect of this uh, uh, very very special grape, uh, and uh, of course uh, it is important to guarantee uh, for every state the opportunity to uh, uh, identify also different varieties, not only Sangiovese, to, um, um, in relation of the potentiality of the wines, in relation of the local place, of the, what we say genius loci in Latin uh, words, so something that can be only there also in relation of Cabernet Sauvignon or Merlot. I respect very much. But it was, uh, for me, a great op um, opportunity to, to share with Francesco Ricasoli uh, the pleasure of uh, the same enthusiasm, the same passion yeah. with Sanchovese. Well, this is very important. This is very important for me. Today we are going to taste some, I want, uh, because I would like to see how San Giovese can develop. Yes. Yeah, and therefore we will taste, uh, in this video, we will taste three, yeah, um, yeah kind of developed San Giovese. There's Rancha 2003, which was a really hot vintage, uh, and Fontaloro, which is the, uh, yeah, your, the, 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 the young of the Ying. From from, uh, from from Rancha 2001 and 2000. Um, yeah, I'm really curious about how these wines will be. Maybe you can uh, say something about um, before we go into taste. Maybe you can say the, for you the differences between Rancha and Fontaloro because both are Sangiovese. Yes, the, the wines we are going to taste are wines. Uh, that uh, represent the reservas, the special reservas of our range. So, but we have not to forget that we produce also the regular Chianti Classico, which is an important subject. It's the basic wine that must be good. That, so our efforts are oriented uh, to uh, guarantee the quality of the Sangiovese also when it's young. And uh, in the same time, it's important to taste the wines for the special selections, to check how it's becoming Sangiovese, how the way is growing. And uh, Sangiovese is a very versatile wine, a very versatile grape. We can enjoy the freshness, the youngness, we can enjoy the maturity. So. In relation to the concept of all, uh, the whole Chianti, it was not possible to consider this subject. Okay. It was normal to enjoy the freshness, to drink it very soon and finish in the cellar. For that yeah. reason, there's no tradition yeah. in the past of very old, old uh, bottles, uh, vintages of the of Sangiovese wines. But when we started to vinify these grapes, uh, this grape uh, was very important to, to see the wines, also the young wines, the special selection in the perspective of the future. Okay. Now the, we have the wines of Arancia and Fontaloro from the 80s, because Arancia and Fontaloro started to be produced. Which one was the first one? 1983, it was 
Border is not only administrative border, but also geological, geological border. Geological, absolutely. And so it was possible for us to have two experiences about Sangiovese. Because of Rancha, totally in the Chianti Classico okay. area, where the soils are very chalky. So it's a crew, right? Stones. It's yeah. only for one single plot. And Fontaloro, outside of Chianti Classico, in the area of Chianti Colisenesi, not far from the area of Crete Senesi. A totally different landscape, yeah. in the, in very direction. famous, very famous, but for other productions, yeah, no more course. olive oil, the typical no more wine. pictures of Tuscany, mm, yes, yeah. but uh, grain, wheat, sorry, uh, truffles, yeah. and cheese, of course, different tradition, different, different also anthropological uh, location, we have different people also, and in the direction of Montalcino, Montepulciano, if we we look at the mountain we have from Rancha in front of us. Yeah. In the right side there is Montalcino, that's beautiful Monte Pulciano, yeah. not far Maremma, the sea. So we have a very large area with a lot of light. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot a lot of light. And yeah. a lot of light and the wind and good ventilation that guarantee the quality and of the, the soil lines. let's talk about the soil and the other side of the border soil is totally different very sandy full of lime that is the Fontaloro area okay so we have two crews yeah. uh, we have two identities one identity facing uh, to uh, to uh, demonstrate that it is possible also in a very small area uh, to have two different Sangiovese for that reason, it's important now to see uh, the evolution of the wines, how they are becoming. Yeah. And uh, so I thought that was in significant to present uh, not only great in vintages, but uh, vintages like 2003, that was uh, not uh, was not uh, a normal vintage because it was very hot uh, yeah, like this year. Yeah, remember. Uh, but uh, we have to remember also that Sangiovese is a, a great opportunity to be itself itself in the place where it was born, where it was adapted okay and so it's important to to see that Sangiovese has the chance to uh, uh, interpret the different soils so the soil of Rancha uh, where does that that is much closer to the forest oh, yeah. where there's a little bit more rain yeah and because of that, we have a little bit more acidity. And uh, the other kind, the other side, where uh, there's the Fontaloro, uh, there are two vineyards of Fontaloro outside of Chianti Classico, uh, uh, where the area is much warmer, so we have sometimes more concentration, more uh, uh, deepness. Okay. And uh, uh, more extraction. Uh, so more potentiality for the wine to stay to live in the bottle. So we enjoy we enjoy the freshness uh, in Rancha, the pleasure of the wine to drink when it's young, but with the wonderful opportunity to to see that the wine also after many years is still giving. And uh, and Fontaloro, uh, I don't I don't want to say Brunello, but in that perspective we are not so far. Yeah. yeah. So a structured wine, a wine to to that can show is 
muscles, but always with the elegancy of the style and the style of Sangiovese in Chianti, because the finesse, the elegancy is the other subject that for us is very important. Okay, so um, I think it's um, because you make me really curious uh, and, and, and ex excited about the, yeah, the, the three wines we have here. Um, so I think before we start, uh, one question more. The Felsina um, or Rancha, Fontaloro, they were always being 100% Sangiovese or did you were sometimes like um, said that or maybe something or you had the idea maybe never tempted to, to, never to tempted. do something to do something different okay never tempted. so absolutely 100% no. true Sangiovese absolutely okay so I think and was not an ideological approach was the authentical way to 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 understand our work so it was direct okay so it was not marketing so it was not easy in the time. Yeah, I can imagine. It was, it was normal to use different international varieties. Yeah, it's easier. Huh? Never tempted. Okay. Never tempted. So we're here now, uply, uh, totally true to the game, and so let's check out the wines. Okay. <laughs> 